Hello reformers and welcome back to Diablo 3 and some extra coverage on the Necromancer class, the new Necromancer class should I say. Anyway, as you can see I've been doing a little bit of off-screen leveling just because I actually find this game extremely fun and I actually really like Diablo as I've said in the lore video that I made. Anyway, the point is I thought it might be a nice idea to talk about some of the skills that I have obtained so far and what build I'm currently using. So if you're playing alongside me or if you're looking to get into Diablo, then, you know, or get back into it, should I say, then, you know, maybe you have a bit of an idea as to what builds are pretty cool and, you know, so on and so forth. This is the only build that I've found so far that I actually really kind of get on with because it has a lot of burst for when you want to deal with bosses and it also has a lot of pets. You'll see what I mean when we actually get into the action. But I'm using bone spikes with the bone pillars rune here and it basically just turns it into poison and gives it a bit of a, an extra reach because as you can see it strikes the target and up to two nearby enemies. Now you can use frost spikes if you so desire. I was using that up until a point but I kind of felt like the increased damage was kind of worth it because you get 75% extra weapon damage. Now, Siphon Blood, I have never used this. I was actually thinking about using it, but if you are gonna use it, then a Power Shift is a very, very good rune to go with it, because look at that, 10% increased damage each time damage is dealt. That's every second, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, every second, I suppose. And so you're going to get 100% extra damage, which is pretty insane. So for, for longer fights, I guess Siphon Blood is good. But as we're just running around killing a huge amount of enemies, then Bone Spikes will do the job. Now, I am using Skeletal Mage still, but I'm using it with the Gift of Death rune, which means that Risen Mages leave a corpse behind when they die or expire. And that synergizes extremely well with the main sort of point of this entire build, which is Revive. Now, I initially thought that this ability was kind of eh, you know, I actually didn't think it was that good, but the Revive skill revives 10 corpses and basically makes them fight for you. So if you kill 10 enemies in an area, you can revive those enemies, and then those enemies will fight for you for 19 seconds, as you can see here. Now, the rune that I'm using is called Purgatory. Now, what that does is it basically means that the minions that you revive with the spell and then the ones that die after 19 seconds will go back into a usable corpse and then you can use revive on them again. So effectively, you have an unlimited supply of corpses. So if you want to use corpse explosion, which I'm actually not using right now, amusingly enough, because I actually really like that skill, but yes, if you want to use Corpse Explosion or something like that, and you want to also use Revive, and you know, you want to combo them or something, I don't know how you could really do that. I mean, I personally feel like this build is it's pretty good synergistically. But anyway, that is a really, really cool skill. You'll see it in action really soon. This is a Bone Spirit. This is the thing that I like to use against big enemies. So bosses, elites, and things like that. And then for our passives, I'm using increasing the duration of our Skeletal Mage and Revive minions, obviously, because we're using Skeletal Mage and Revive, and increases the attack speed of Bone Spikes. I, I didn't really see any, any kind of other thing to take. I mean, if I was playing on Hardcore, I'd probably be using Final Service, because that saves you from dying once every 60 seconds. And otherwise, there is this. Reduces the es essence cost on the cooldown of Command Golem. So I might actually change that. I'm actually just going to use that instead because Command Golem at the moment is actually pretty cool because as you can see, the active for it, the Golem consumes corpses at the target location, increasing its damage by 30% per corpse. So if I want to use corpses, this is a really good way to do it. Otherwise, while using a Scythe, gain 2% essence and life per kill. So that's pretty cool as well. I'm, <laughs> hilariously enough, I'm actually not using a Scythe. So I should probably use something else. So, yeah, it's, uh, 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 poison ability is also slow. Okay, so considering I'm using poison and bone spikes, rigor mortis is really good. Slows enemies and reduces their attack speed by 30% for 5 seconds. So that's pretty cool. Otherwise, there you go. So, <laughs> there's the talking bit over for this particular episode. So don't worry, we're going to get into the action just now. Now, as I said, this is not a hardcore video by any means. 
I am literally just having fun playing the game that I actually really like. So yeah, there's that. Anyway, there are new areas, as I did say in the previous video, and they are mostly located in the high heavens, as you can see here. There are upper and lower realms of infernal fate, upper realm of cursed fate, lower realm of cursed fate, and as well as, I don't believe there was one, besieged tower, realm of unbending fate, and fractured fate. So all of these new fate levels. I don't think they had those before. I don't seem to remember those anyway. Anyway, we're going to go into the Silver Spire level 1, and we're going to have a good old fun time. Oh yeah, by the way, I leveled this guy up in a couple of hours. Basically, I think two, three hours, four hours maybe? I don't know, but it took a... I obviously took breaks in between because obviously I had to do things, but yeah. And the main reason why I was able to level it up so fast is because of this. So if you don't know already, Kane's set at level 23 is something you definitely want to craft when you're leveling up a new character. And also you probably want to craft Born's Heart of Steel and Impunity. And that is going to give you 70% increased experience. So if you are looking to level up really fast in Diablo, I'm still using those even now. And they are very low level, but because of this weapon right here that I have placed a very high level ruby gem in, I'm able to deal insane damage. And that damage is just going to allow us to basically go through any enemies that we want. We're going to be using a little bit of essence here as well, of course. But for the most part, oh, there's a gelatinous sire. Well, that's going to die very quickly, isn't it? Oh yes, and now there's numerous amounts of them. Oh no. Okay, so I'm going to try and revive here. There we go, reviving a couple so that they can actually fight for us. But as you can see, yeah, we're going to get a huge amount of legendaries right now. Thank you very much. Okay, so we got a belt. And did we get something else? I think we got... Didn't we, didn't we get another legendary or no? Maybe I just missed that. Oh, well, never mind. We got a legendary belt and shoulders. No, we did actually get that. Nice. Very nice. So if you see here, these are corpses on the floor, as we've seen in the previous episode with the corpse explosion and stuff like that. So if I use revive on them, boom! There you go. I've got a bunch of skeletons that will fight with me. Now, they do revive others, so they will revive any enemy that you kill and that leaves behind a corpse. And they stay for 19 seconds, so that's pretty nice. Okay, so let's have a look at the belt. Oh my, well, that's very nice. It's not as good as what I would like, but it is an upgrade, so it's very good. And we're also going to be taking that as well. It's a pretty decent upgrade. And, oh yeah, I also got the Ring of Royal Grandeur, if you can believe that, from the bounty quests in the Tristram area. So, yeah, that's pretty insane as well. Anyway, that's a socketed ring. I've given a ring to this guy. I haven't been using my Templar at all because I was playing with my wife. So, yeah, that obviously is... The reason why he has no good weapons, yeah, so, yeah. Usually I don't particularly like to use him anyway, because I feel like, I don't know, he, he's good, you know, he'll help you, but I don't, I don't think it's really necessary, considering you have this many pets. And this is actually pretty decent, these Spalders, but as you see, I mean, 20% experience, I don't know whether that's really worth it. I'm going to keep it anyway and just see, but for now we're just going to continue onward and see what we can do about completing some more of these bounties. Okay, let's just summon more of those guys. Ah, there's a boss. So now I'm going to use Bone Spirit. Yeah. I used one Bone Spirit. I actually used two, but the second one didn't even reach her, and she died instantly. And I'm doing 559,000 damage with Bone Spirit critical. And that doesn't really mean much, doesn't really mean much to you, I, I suppose, because numbers in Diablo don't really matter as long as you kill enemies really, really fast. So, yeah, that that kind of doesn't make... Doesn't, me saying I'm doing this much damage doesn't really make any difference, but I'm one-hitting elites with that skill. So, you can kind of take away from that what you will, but that's, that's pretty impressive and pretty cool in my opinion. And that's exactly what you want to do. With, uh, with a game like Diablo, you want to be as fast as possible and I'm playing on hard at the moment I could probably increase the difficulty but what I want to do is just kind of like stream through as much as possible just be really really quick 
And if I play on a higher difficulty, that's probably going to reduce the speed and the efficiency of what we're able to do by a pretty, yeah, kind of a significant margin. So I wouldn't really want to do that unless I could kill the enemies at the same pace as I'm currently killing them. So yeah, that's also a bit of a bit of a thing to take into account. But we're good. We're good. We're leveling up quite fast, and I quite like that. And the I mean, just look at all the enemies that are currently helping us fight at the moment. I have how many how many pets? I have let's see here. I have 8 and then 10, so 18. I have 18 pets, which is pretty crazy in itself. I mean, I know the witch doctor can create a huge amount of pets. The demon hunter also obviously has those sentry turrets and can have a bunch of pets as well with the thanks to an armor set bonus. But yeah, this is just really cool. I mean, the Witch Doctor can have, what is it now, four or three of those demon dogs or undead dogs. Zombie dogs, actually, yeah. Zombie dogs. They can have three or four of those, and then they can have one really big, it's like, voodoo golem thing. And then they can also have ten or fifteen of those little things that run around with those daggers. I can't remember what they're called now. It's been such a long time since I've played the Witch Doctor, but yeah, they have those. So they technically have less pets, unless you count, obviously, the fact that corpse spiders are also technically counted as pets, I suppose. Wow, we can actually go in and kill Diablo. That's pretty cool. Well, we're going to go to the Cursed Shrines first. I think we'll probably go and kill Diablo after that. And yeah, so it seems like the Necromancer is the pet class at the moment. Maybe. Am I forgetting any other class that has pets? Don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, so we have to find the portal to the Nephilim Proving Ground at the moment. Okay. Well, we can head down here then. I'm just going to summon a bunch of these skeletal mages. That's basically my essence spender at the moment. Every other skill that I have, with the exception of the Command Skeletons thing, does not use essence. So I can basically just spam Skeletal Mages as much as I need to. Now we need to cleanse all of the shrines before the timer. Yes, before the timer disappears. Okay, we're, we're going to do that. Just get as many of these guys summoned as possible. And I'm going to be, you know, reviving corpses. There we go. There's only a certain number of corpses that can actually stay on the screen at one point, by the looks of things. So you do need to be a little bit on the ball, you know, with making sure everything's working there. Okay, so have I... Where, where are the other cursed shrines? Are they... Ah, there they are. There we go. Okay, yes. Please continue. Wow, we ha we have a, a kill streak right now of 240 kills. Wow, that's pretty insane. If I'd been a little bit quicker to get to the next shrines, then I probably could have had a really, really amazing experience bonus there. But, oh well, never mind. I think I might actually be out of time. Am I out of time? Yep, I think I might be out of time. Wow, that was only the bonus, but yeah. I'm not used to doing these anymore, because I haven't really gone to the high heavens that much. But, oh well, doesn't matter too much, I suppose. I mean, you do get an extra chest, but eh, I don't, I don't really mind. I don't really mind too much. I was talking as well, so I suppose that does take away a little bit of my concentration from what I'm doing. Let's see, what's going on here? No, he doesn't need anything. There we go. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so, yeah, we're going to go to kill Diablo now. And we're going to see exactly how much damage we are able to deal. Because this is the true test. Because Diablo is, of course, the... Well, technically, he's the main antagonist of the game. But, obviously, as you progress, you know, you then fight Malfiel, you know, Angel of Death, and, you know, all that sort of thing. So, yeah. It's going to be a pretty decent test. Pretty decent. All right. So where where is he? Oh, he's going to be very annoying, isn't he? Because we have to go to the Crystal Arch. Oh, Grim Knight. Grim Knight the Soulless. Ah, hello there. Ah, you're dead. You're very, very dead. All those pets. All those pets. Absolutely insane. Actually really loving the Necromancer at the moment. I actually don't think... Is it... That's the thing. Is it too powerful? I was actually discussing this earlier with Victoria and I, I don't know whether it is. I don't know whether it is too powerful because... I mean, it has a huge amount of pets, right? But I'm obviously not playing on a very high difficulty. I, I would expect that I'd have to 
come to that conclusion at a later point when I've actually played more. Because once you, you know, once you get one of the sets, and once you get their bonuses, and find out what kind of build you want to use, because obviously this build is probably not even optimized. My build is not optimized, far from it, obviously. It's just a leveling build. But in general, it's, you're, you're going to find out how powerful the Necromancer is at level 70, basically. That's the, that's the time when you'll actually know when, you know, the power level is, is appropriate. But obviously, I'm going to, if you, if you're interested, do let me know, by the way, in the comments, if you're interested to see more, and if you're interested to see how Ketchup actually, you know, performs at level 70, then do let me know, because I'll, you know, I'll make a video on that if and when I do actually get some set pieces, because I'm actually quite excited to see what kind of builds the set bonuses will allow you to do. And I'm 100% I'm sure there's going to be a poison build, there's going to be a cold build, and there's going to be a pet build, and maybe something else to do with corpse explosion, probably something to do with corpse explosion. I'm going to use my, look at that, look at that, bone spirit. It's doing so much damage, look at that. It, it did like, I don't know, 15% damage to him or something? And he has a lot of HP, so obviously you do have to take that into account. But anyway, I'm just going to summon a bunch of spirits here because they're going to be the ones that will deal the most damage. Look at that. We weren't even in that zone for too long and he already got us into phase two back here. So pretty amazing. Oh yeah, he is done. You are done, Diablo. Thank you very much. Oh yes. And then he's going to have this extremely long and drawn out extravagant death sequence, which actually looks very, very cool. But we can still hit him, <laughs> which is amusing. I always think that's quite amusing to continue hitting him after he's dead, technically. Okay, so there you go. He did drop a couple of things. Obviously, nothing too good as far as I'm aware. Doesn't seem like anything too good. As you can see, I'm actually getting upgrades, like, for example, these shoulders, but I'm not replacing them because these shoulders right here give me the you know experience bonus so that's pretty good oh there's actually a chest here oh i didn't even see that oh very good oh wow look at that that's nice okay i don't have enough to take these but do i want to yeah i kind of do so i'm gonna just take those instead and i'm actually going to use those instead of what i had in previously and i'm going to put in a bit of a gem there to give me a little bit more intelligence and i'm going to put in another gem over there too there we go might as well make the most of my damage, right? So I'm just going to get as much intelligence as possible. Okay, so we did have to come back here and just, you know, do our salvaging. And then we're going to go back to Worm Sign. We need to find Worm Sign and kill him. Oh, we need to enter the Sacalum. Oh, okay. There's Duriel's Dark Rider. Oh, well, Duriel was obviously in Diablo 2. Oh, that's cool. It's a nice little reference there. I actually didn't even realize that at the time when I was playing through Diablo 3 beforehand. Obviously, I was running around doing bounties and things, so I may have just ignored it, but still. Hmm, that might be a nice new ring. Is that a nice new ring? Yeah, it is actually really nice. Let's do that. And the ring of royal grandeur is actually really nice, but I needed it at level... I need it at level 70 more than anything, so... Yeah, I find that so amusing. I was just... Oh, so kind of disappointed and a bit grinding my gears about that because when you're at level 70 you want a ring of royal grandeur you know some some classes will definitely need a ring of royal grandeur to make their set bonus work a little bit better for those of you that don't know anything about the ring of royal grandeur it basically means that it reduces the number of items needed for set bonuses by one so in other words if you have three Usually the set bonuses happen at two pieces, four pieces, and six pieces. Usually there are six pieces in total for a, a set. So torso, helm, shoulders, you know, things like that. And if you have the Ring of Royal Grandeur, to get the fourth set bonus, you only need three set pieces. So if the fourth set bonus, for example, is really, really good, then technically what you could do is you could have three pieces of one set and three pieces of another set, and then you could get the fourth set bonus of both of those sets. As far as I'm aware, that's still how it works. Maybe because I've been out of the game a little bit of a little bit of time, that might not be the case. But as far as it was back then, that's that's what it that's what, that's what it was like. So yeah, it was pretty cool. But obviously, the sixth set bonus is usually really good. So you probably don't want to do the mix and match thing that I just said. 
but it was just an example to kind of let you know how the system works. So, yeah. But for those of you that do know, then obviously you already know what I'm talking about. But anyway, we're going to go over here and take care of a lot. Oh, look, a lot, the Hellion. A lot. Hello, a lot. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Bone Spirit absolutely murdered her. There you go. All right, so there's a new ring. No, that's, that's the new ring that we already got, wasn't it? Oh, well, anyway, we can just continue moving onward. Ooh, Grizzly Tribute. That might actually be a nice passive skill. I'm going to take a look at that in just a second. Let's see. You are healed for 10% of your life on hit when one of your minions hits an enemy. So there's another potential yeah, quote-unquote build. I, I personally feel like life on hit for a necromancer is something you should not really be prioritizing, but maybe it's going to be something amazing. Who knows? Okay, so I'm going to get Poltergeist for Bone Spirit. That means the maximum number of charges is, is increased to four instead of three. Revive minions deal an additional 25% damage, but last 12 seconds. No, I don't, I, I don't particularly want to use that. Maybe it's good, maybe it's not. Yeah, by the way, Land of the Dead, all corpse skills can be used at will for 10 seconds. That's pretty amazing if you have a uh, you know, combo wombo to do or something like that. And I'm not a big fan of Corpse Lance, but a lot of people have been saying that Corpse Lance is actually a really, really good ability. So maybe it is. I haven't really tested it, so... You know, maybe I'm just really not a big fan of that, that ability. Maybe it's just a personal preference thing. Oh, we have to complete the worm sign event. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is something that I have not really done that often. I think I've done this about three times, I think, or something, in the entire time that I've played the bounties and things. So it's not particularly something I'm very familiar with, but it's, it's going to be one of those things where it's just like, kill these enemies in a wave. Yeah, slay all the demonic hellbearers, and there they there they all are. They're all around here. I'm just going to summon a bunch of mages. They can finish that off while I move ahead. And I still think Bone Spike is probably the best primary skill if you're using a lot of essence. Because if you use the essence like I'm doing right now with this, you know, spectral mages, skeletal mages, then using, you know, getting a good amount of resource generation is obviously a pretty decent idea. So I'm going to use... Yep, there you go. I used Bone Spirit, and he died instantly. So, yeah, pretty amazing. And, uh, yeah, you, so, some of you may actually be, you know, not particularly happy about me using this axe with the with the high-level gem in, but that's, that's what everyone does. Everyone does do that to level up faster, because why would you want to make leveling slower than it has to be? Because you want to get to the point where you're going to get sets, and you're going to go through greater rifts and have fun like that. So, yeah, that's... That's just something to take into account if you're a little bit irritated by that. But isn't it cool to see a character just absolutely murder everything? I mean, that's exactly the reason why Diablo is Diablo, you know? Diablo, you play Diablo to run through everything at a really, really fast pace and have a lot of fun. And yeah, that's exactly yeah, that's exactly what it is. So I like it. I like it. It's one of my favorite games, I think. And uh, if you didn't know... You know, if you didn't know. I mean, I, I have a wide variety of different games that I actually really like playing. Uh, I just don't get enough time to play them, unfortunately. So it's really quite a treat for me when I actually do get to make videos on games that I actually like. You know, that I actually play off-screen as well. You know, in my own time. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, we are almost ready to complete the bounty. And then we'll be getting some... What, what is it now? What do we get for completing the, the set of bounties in the high heavens? I think we get some crafting materials. I think it's, what is it now? Is it angel wings or something like that? I think I can actually just check that. It is corrupted angel flesh. There you go. So that's what we're going to be getting soon. And there is also another build that has been going around that is regarding curses. So there are a number of curses that you can get, like decrepify and frailty... And there's also something called, what is it now? Let's just have a look. Leech as well. And they're, they're all curses. Crippling curse, curse the area, crippling curse. So basically frailty, for example, a crippling curse that kills enemies with less than 15% health. It lasts 30 seconds. So if you technically curse everyone and then get them all low, they'll all die instantly when they get to 15% HP. So that's pretty cool, but I, I, I don't know. I think it's a bit clunky. To be honest, I think the curse system 
unless there's a set bonus that makes the curses dramatically better, like combines their runes all into one or something along those lines. I'm actually unsure about this, obviously, because I haven't looked at the set bonuses or anything like that. But Bone Spirit! We're going to use Bone Spirit. Yep, there you go. He's dead. That is <laughs> absolutely hilarious. Okay, so we are now done. Oh, there's a new event. Oh, yeah, of course. I actually thought that I had done something by killing the boss here or something like that, because this is a new area, the Briarthorn Cemetery. But, yeah, we'll just speak to Tyrion now, and he'll give us our chest. There you go, and we got some corrupted angel flesh, of course, and we got a bunch of blood shards and things like that. I don't know whether you noticed, but I actually had 666 blood shards, which is rather amusing, before I picked up those blood shards. And, yeah, these gloves are really good, but I'm not going to be using them because Kane's set gives me 15% extra experience and 10% better chance of finding magical items. So it's pretty pretty decent. Anyway, I'm going to just salvage all of those, and we're going to end this episode off here. I thank you very much for watching, and I will see you at level 70 if you want to see that. <laughs>